All right. This is the bird's first natural unfiltered sunlight. Hey guys, welcome to my daily vlogs. Please subscribe. What's up, my boy high squad? How are you doing? Did you sleep well? Guys, look at it. Look at it. The Avery. Sun streaming in. Oh my gosh. Oh, guys. Look at it. It's so nice. Wow, I can't wait for the day I could like watch the birds just here. You know what I mean? Just chilling. The thing I do know though is that rubber tree and this yucca tree will probably be full of poo. So we'll have to be like constantly cleaning it. Anything under a bird perch, in case you don't know, is where they will poo. Oh, but look at that. I mean, look at the tree. It's al It already looks like it's reaching for the light. Guys, let's see what it looks like from downstairs. I honestly feel like I'm I'm in a zoo. Like <laughs> this this looks like a zoo exhibit. <gasps> Whoa. Gorgeous. I just love the sun. It's perfect because like it if the birds are flying around, they can choose like do they want a sunny area or do they want a shaded area? And I do plan on putting one cage there and one cage here. I'll have to see because I might put a shade on top of the cage just to further add shaded area, but I don't know. Oh, it's looking so good, guys. I'm so happy. Let's open this. Look at that. Oh, it looks amazing. That is so, so nice. <gasps> wow. What do you guys think? It is just so gorgeous. So Ate June and her team are coming back because they're going to replace these pots and make them black. I think we might get more plants, not sure. Um, and we also want to tie this tree to some of the rings back there just so it doesn't fall in case it's really windy. Um, just to secure it. Also, I've decided I want to remove the weaver ants that are in that tree. Um, just to be safe. If ever we ran start to appear again, I'll just cut them out as well. Um, I changed my mind because I realized they will pretty much spread quickly. Ants being in this aviary, especially weaver ants, would be really beneficial because it will help get rid of pest insects. However, um, they do spray formic acid, and I do remember that one time uh, our first bird, Malaya, crested mina, and she ended up falling into my yellow crazy ant terrarium and it really hurt her eye, so we're gonna have to somehow get way up there and cut those uh, weaver ant nests out. I'm, I'm just, a, I'm, I'm being paranoid, a paranoid parent. I don't want my birds to be injured. I'm eating pineapple and cinnamon and the birds are watching me eat. Look at them. <laughs> they are all like, give me some of that. See, especially this one. <laughs> These birds are busy flying around. They're on their flying spree. I can't wait to see these birds flying in the aviary, guys. Look at them. So here's the new plan, guys. Um, Ate June, the landscaper, who you guys saw in yesterday's vlog, uh, her and her team are gonna come finish just final touches in the aviary and then um, early tomorrow morning we're gonna move the cages into the aviary. Um, I'm trying to decide whether like to let them out that day or let them stay in their cage in the aviary for a day so that they can adapt. What do you guys think? Should I just like let them out? Because the thing is if I keep them in their cage I'm thinking they'll like recalibrate while they're in their cage right in the new environment they'll be like whoa where are we but at least there's some familiarity and like they'll have their cage their toys etc and then when they've regained their bearings after i don't know 24 hours of living in their cage in the aviary then let them out and explore because i would love it if the birds went back to their cage at night to sleep that would be cool right or back into their cage to eat. Because then that way I'll know that if ever I need to catch any of the birds 
say, to bring them to a vet or something, we could just do that. Maybe by feeding them in their cage. Guys, look at the birds bathing in their water bowl. They're so cute. I find it hilarious how they do it. All three of them do it. Today, I put a little bit of, whoops, chamomile tea into their um, water in both birds. And so they're actually not only drinking this water, but the chamomile tea is getting on their feathers. And then when they preen, they actually ingest some of that tea, all the goodness, the nutrients from the tea. And it's good. Chamomile, of course, is known to, it's a calming tea. Keeps the birds calm. You guys are gonna smell so good later. Oh man, Mabuhai Squad. I cannot wait to watch these birds bur bathe. Uh, that, was a, that was a tongue twister. I cannot wait to watch these birds bathe in the aviary. They won't have to worry about bathing in their water bowl anymore. <laughs> you guys are so funny. They love it. They love it so much. Look at that, whoa! That was a flurry. They just keep going back for more. That is Scarlet. And that's Scarlet again. <laughs> guys, look at Billy. <laughs> Billy has n now been moved to the side lot. He's got a house there. And he has full, look at all the food he has. Mambu High Squad, I think it's time we get another goat. What do you guys think? Maybe a, a girlfriend? But then they'll have babies. And then what do we do? Do we sell? <laughs> I'm here in the Iguri. It's like midday. And the trees and plants actually make this place feel really cool. It is not hot at all. I'm just... Pouring water. Oops. Oh, oh, into one of the water features. Gotta replace the water. I think this smaller one is leaking. We might need to reseal it at the bottom. But one of the things from the boys' water I'm gonna see is if this actually is gonna work because um, these water features, as beautiful as they are, are pretty high maintenance and a little hard to clean, like harder than I thought. So um, we'll see, we'll just try them out for like, I don't know, a week or until I start to get frustrated with them. It's easy to remove, but it's not as convenient as I thought it would be. Like we have to remove this, we have to clean all of this, wash it every day, and then we gotta drain the water and then refill it. So, man, like it's a lot of work. And then there are times when this pump isn't working as well. So I think eventually we'll be not using these in the aviary. We might possibly fixate these water features somewhere outside, um, or the roof deck, or somewhere we could use it where it can look nice. And wild birds would probably love to use it too. And then instead, I'll probably have one simple like bird bath fountain, like literally built just for bird bath and only have one basin that we could just clean, wash and replace with water and not three. <laughs> but we'll see. We'll see my boy squad. I think for now this will work. But it looks so zen. I love these three pots. I mean, if we could guarantee that the birds could drink from their water bowls and not from these, then it wouldn't be so bad. I could just switch these out every month or so, clean it every month. But this is meant for the birds, so... What? <laughs> I gotta figure out how to do it. See? It's hard to place. Wait. Alright, there we go. Woo. There we go. Sure does look pretty though, doesn't it? So zen. So um, as you can see, there's a lot of like room to walk around. I love that. I'm thinking again, as you saw yesterday, putting one cage back there into this space here. And then the other cage possibly here in this space. Um, that way we have all doors, this door, this door, that door, and that door, clear. We don't have ca a cage, you know, in front of it. So I think that should work. And I mean, it's tucked away on the side, so it's not too, like, intrusive to the eyes. Like, it does they don't stick out. We'll see. I really love this. Look at this. 
Love this plant. This here is the Dracaena. Um, and then, of course, these hanging Peruvian ferns. Look at them. Gorgeous, right? So nice. I love this rubber tree. Love this yucca tree. Love it so much. Love this maiden hairs uh, fern. Super cute. RJ loves money plant. This money plant. Yay. So beautiful. And I really, really love this tree. This African talisai. And it'll supposedly grow pretty tall. So it's perfect. Now I need to figure out where to fasten more of branches like that. More at ground level. Some of you guys suggested I have branches at ground level and I agree. I have to I just have to figure out how to how to fasten them and where to fasten them. Actually, um, we might go shopping because along the roadside, sometimes I find these wood shops that sell actual like driftwood on platforms and they're, I find they're perfect for birds. So maybe if I could find one that could kind of be placed here and then kind of like weave up here and across, that would be gorgeous. And maybe another one here or over towards here, right? And then at least the parrots can kind of come close to at like eye level and I could interact with them, etc. I mean, there's this. They could perch on here. The crimson belly conures can anyway. And then the birds can also perch on the water feature. They could probably also perch here on the rubber tree, but we'll see. Gosh, guys, I still can't believe this is in our house. It really is a trip, crazy. I mean, it just looks so calming just to look at. Like once we have furniture and stuff in the living room or even just hanging out in the kitchen, just looking at that, oh, it's so relaxing somehow. So, so beautiful. Birds are now feasting on their afternoon dry mix, which is um, a bunch of seeds, legumes, and oats and see pumpkin seeds and pellets awesome man i'm gonna really miss having these birds in the bedroom honestly like it's just so convenient because we've been living here in the bedroom mostly while they're finishing other parts of the house and it's just so convenient rolling out of bed and like making breakfast for the birds and then like watching the, the birds and like sitting here and with my coffee and spending time with the birds. I'm gonna miss you guys here, honestly. But I do know that the aviary will be so much better for you guys, so much better. And you know what I noticed too? So these birds here, right? The blue-naped parrots, native to the Philippines, they are super health, well, they, they're healthier than when they first arrived. Um, you could tell by their feather quality. But one thing I did notice is their beak is starting to discolor. A little bit, just a little bit. Um, and that, I believe, is because of not enough ultraviolet light. They're by a window, so they are getting some light, especially in the afternoons. But I think they need more Mabuhay squad. So I can't wait for them to move into the aviary. Okay, no squabbling, guys. The beaks on these birds are okay. Though I do see a little bit of scaling on their beaks, which, I, I mean, it's normal but it could be better Mabuhay squad right when keeping pets why just go with the basics when you can give them the best I mean these birds are healthy but my friend is telling me my bird friend is telling me that if these birds get more sunlight their beaks will really shine a bright orange which is my goal I can't wait birds I can't wait I want to be able to leave my room, look into the aviary, and see the most beautifully colored birds in the aviary, like in the sun, perched, happy. Oh my gosh, that, that idea is making me tear. I'm getting emotional. I would love for our birds to enjoy that. You know what I mean? Life outside. It'll just be a different thing. Guys, tomorrow morning, okay? Tomorrow morning. Promise. Just one more day. I'm gonna try to enjoy my time with you birds. <laughs> Because something tells me I'm going to be spending a lot of time downstairs. Which is okay because RJ is telling me that I believe by next week or our stairs should be done. Something like that. And we're, we're going to already start to clean up the first floor. And maybe, just maybe, our kitchen will be functional. Yay! Oh my gosh, I'm going to cross our finger, my fingers. And if that's the case, then I'm going to sp be spending a lot of time downstairs, I think. Particularly just to make sure the birds are okay and adapting well. 
to life in the aviary. Mabuhay squad, this is a dream, honestly. I am so grateful. Just everything. The aviary, this Mabuhay squad farmhouse, it's just a total dream. A dream that was, looking back, was hard, you know what I mean, to work for. But, I mean, it's worth it. And also, another thing that happened that I didn't tell you about is my aunt and uncle are here from the from Canada. They're here in the Philippines. Um, sadly, my tita's uh, brother passed away, so they had to come here on emergency to attend the funeral. Um, but they're gonna be here for a month, guys. And th these are the parents of my cousins, RJ, Rowena, Marigold. They're a big family, guys. Rachel, Victoria, Marianne. And like inside, they are also like my second set of parents because they helped me through hard times as well. Um, and they're here, so I can't wait for them to come visit the Mabuhay Squad farmhouse, guys. Woo! I don't know, every time relatives and friends from Canada come and visit me here in the Philippines, somehow I feel a little bit less homesick. Why am I so emo- There's something in this coffee! It's making me emotional. Anyways, bottom line is, I am super grateful in this moment. <sighs> We're gonna try to finish as much as the of the first floor as possible. Um, so my aunt and uncle can visit and hopefully sleep over. Yay, that'll be fun. And as for the rest of my family, like my mom, my dad, my brother, uh, they're scheduled to come in January. We could have flown home for Christmas, but man, for one thing, tickets are super expensive. That's why my whole family is going to wait till after Christmas to come here because ticket prices drop. And also, it's our first year at the Mabu High Squad farmhouse. Me and RJ want to spend Christmas in our house. We expected to spend Christmas here at the Mabu High Squad farmhouse two Christmases ago. You know what I'm saying? So this is gonna be fun. I can't wait to start decorating. Funny enough, here in the Philippines, it's already Christmas season. Guys, in case you didn't know, the Philippines celebrates the longest Christmas season in the world. As soon as September hits, September 1, it's fair game. We have no major holidays after, like, in that time. We're all about Christmas now. If you go to the malls right now here in the Philippines, Christmas music, Christmas everything. It's already Christmas time. We don't got, like, we, we have Halloween, but not really. And uh, we don't have Thanksgiving here in the Philippines. Every day is Thanksgiving. Well, feasts, I guess, um, are Thanksgiving, but... Christmas is our big thing, so it's Christmas holiday now, so I can't wait for RJ and I to start decorating. <gasps> to start decorating our Christmas tree! Oh my gosh! We can finally have a legit Christmas tree. A big one. Oh. Alright guys, see? It's our kitchen in the stages of being cleaned up now. And guys, one thing I want to show you. Guys, look at the light fixture we chose. Oh! See it? Oh! Awesome! Isn't that cool? It is so interesting. We saw it in the store and we're like, oh, we love it. So this is the light that goes over our U-shaped counter. Makes a nice conversation piece, I suppose. We could have chosen something bigger. However, we, I feel like it would have taken away from this, which is the main feature of the kitchen, the RJ's U-shaped counter. Um, so I think this is a a very good size, in my opinion. It looks really good, but um, our dining room light set, which you saw in our previous vlogs, that one is really big. But this one, I think, is just the right size. I can't wait to host parties, guys. So not sure if I showed you guys this room. This room here is the um, entertainment room. Yeah, I think I showed you guys this room. Oh, the aviary even looks good from here. <laughs> This is my first time seeing it from the back here. Oh, so cool. Um, anyways, this is our entertainment room. Uh, it used to be called the studio room because we were originally supposed to use it for like shooting YouTube videos. However, um, see in back there, there's a recording booth for recording music or voiceovers for Ants Canada or anything recording audio sound. But then I figured, you know what? What if we want to watch movies? Like when we have guests or friends over and I mean, they want to just chill and they get tired of the aviary or the ant room or swimming. We need a place to like entertain guests. So this is the entertainment room. We, we plan on having a home theater. There will be a drop down home theater screen from up here. So that will be, that'll be cool. We had someone come in 
and take measurements for the sound system that we're gonna outfit here. Uh, we'll have seating so we could watch movies, Netflix, whatever, our YouTube videos, or we could just do karaoke on a huge screen and then host parties here, which will be really, really nice. Um, so that's my vision for this room. There'll be bean bags, that kind of thing. What do you guys think? Wouldn't that be cool? And then like, let's say we extend the party outside, like by the pool. All we need to do is open these like sliding doors. And if it's your turn to sing karaoke, you just get out of the pool, come here and sing. And everyone outside can hear you perform. It's kind of like a, a stage actually, see? It's like a platform. I'm pretty sure some of our guests will have kids and we could just pop on a movie. The kids can hang out here and play. And if RJ and I ever have kids, we could turn this into like a, a playroom as well. Partial playground room. I don't know, we'll see. The, this room has, can be multifunctional. But guys, I can't get over how pretty the aviary looks from the studio room. It looks so nice. Never expected that. All right guys, I managed to cut two of the weaver ant nests. There's one more way up there. Somewhere. I have to try to reach it. One more. That. Oh, ah, yeah. Got it. I gotta trim it a little. Little haircut. Ow! 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 And then stick it in here. Oh. Ah, Weaver on site love you, but ouch, they bite. I mean, it's not that bad. It just feels like a little pinch. Yes, all right. Got all the nests. So the queen or queens should be in here. So there will be no more Weaver ants to proliferate on that tree, from what I know. Um, I mean, by next year, another queen might come by when it's mating season and start a new nest. And if it does, just gotta cut it off. In terms of this, hmm, gotta decide what to do with it. I could either keep this nest and start a new ant colony for the Ants Canada channel, or release it um, at a nearby tree. Mabuhai squad, good morning. Guess who's in the aviary getting rained on? Well, kinda. It fits perfectly in that little corner. I'm gonna have to trim some of these branches so that the door opens, but it's perfect. All right, and in goes the blue napes. All right, guys, birds are in. Wow. And look, this one's actually choosing to be in the rain. See, we've got half of it shaded. I'm putting the shade over the part where the food and water will be. But look, this one loves the rain. It's a female. Yes, enjoy. They all got rained on already. These birds are all huddled underneath their shelter for now. I'm gonna make this much more beautiful. But now it's time for me to make their breakfast. So in terms of the bottom, completely bottomless now. Well, look, there's a grill, but that's it. So the pool will just fall down and we hose it down the drain. These are the drains there. We've actually removed it because we need to fix one of the drains. Your new home birdies. Guys, they look so good here. I'll probably release them in the afternoon. I'm not sure if you guys could see, but I've put tape on all the windows just to let them know there are windows there. It's actually a blessing that it's rained because I think the birds will be able to see the streaks of droplets on the window. I mean, I don't foresee them flying right now while it's raining, but my hope is that they see those droplets and are like, Okay, I can't fly into there. Not sure when I'm gonna release them, but when I do, um, it's gonna be <laughs> under very close supervision. So I've moved their shade on this side. I'm gonna have to make a much more beautiful shade part for them. It needs to drape over there. Because this is where I'm gonna be putting their food bowl. You guys like being in the rain, huh? You guys are wet. I'm sure you guys are hungry too. It's breakfast time. Okay, for real, I'm gonna go make your breakfast now, guys. Just stay here and don't go anywhere. <laughs> guys, the dogs are wondering where the birds went. Sahara, where did the birds go? Where are the birds? They're in the aviary now. <laughs> See, they're trying to like, 
They're like trying to look for the birds. Oh, it's so weird to see them not here. I mean, but the birds are in a better, better place. <laughs> and I love that they're being rained on right now. It's perfect. Mm, there's Cypher barking at the street dogs. Oh my gosh, guys, can you believe this? It's really happened. The birds are in. Wow, okay, man. You know, why do I feel like a mom that just saw her kid off the college? You know what I'm saying? It's like, my babies are growing up so fast. Like I said, that is a much better place for them. They can finally get some natural rain, which they're getting now. So good for their feathers. They're getting some natural sunlight as soon as the sunlight comes out. Oh, it's gonna be great. Um, but again, I have to monitor them to see how they're doing while they're in there. Just wanna make sure everything is okay. Um, they're exposed to elements. They're exposed to like insects and stuff. Now, so I'm trying to think. I guess the plan will be for now, feed them breakfast, let them settle in, like regain their bearings. I don't know if I'm gonna let them out today, guys. Should I? Maybe just the conures? Or should I let them out tomorrow when they've settled in, like the original plan? Maybe that. Maybe let them out tomorrow. Or possibly, let them out in a couple days. I'm not sure guys, what should I do? There's no handbook for this kind of thing. We are like totally experimenting. We're trailblazing Mabuhai Squad. I love being the first to try things. Not that I know for a fact someone else in the world hasn't done, you know, this that we've done, but it's not like I can tune into YouTube and Google house with aviary in the middle. When to release. <laughs> You know what I mean? I'm hoping that this little experiment of ours will help other people in the future who, I don't know, maybe want to do the same thing. It's all trial and error. So guys, my main fear, I have three main fears with this whole bird release in the aviary. One is that the birds crash into the windows. That fear is obviously there. When my conures were flying around my room, they didn't really crash into the windows. They kind of like flew up to it and touched it and then like flew away. They didn't fly into mirrors and stuff. And when I had the Gaia, she never, my African Grey Parrot, never flew into a window. But it is possible that they might fly into the windows. That's why I put the tape there. Hopefully they don't. And if they do, that it's just a tap and they're like, oh, there's a window there. Noted. The, uh, the second fear I have is that the birds will attack each other. Um, something tells me they won't. I, I looked online, I tried to research, and some say that, you know, you shouldn't mix birds of different sizes, but there are so many cases where there are birds of different sizes mixed in a single aviary, including this. So as you can see in these pictures, this is an aviary from someone here in the Philippines with tons of species in there of different sizes. Like I see African greys in there, I see lovebirds in there, and there are so many websites that say don't mix lovebirds with your flocks because they're very territorial. Well, see, like this aviary breaks those rules. There are even like pigeons in here, I believe. Um, so it's really strange and it's possible. When there's a will, there's a way, guys. Um, so I'm hoping the birds get along. They've had more than enough time to kind of see each other through the cage bars. More so now in the aviary, they're even closer now. And then my third fear, guys, is that they completely destroy the plants. <laughs> They go on, like, they, I release the birds and they go straight to work, destroying all the trees and the plants. And if that happens, we're just gonna have to put more trees and plants in there. Most parrot enclosures don't incorporate really plants because of their tendency to destroy things. But I have seen aviaries, like in when we visited Bacolod, right? That uh, sanctuary, they housed parrots in large outdoor aviaries with plants and trees in it. So let's just hope. I'm gonna add some chamomile flowers into their chop as well, so they calm down. I need to make breakfast extra tasty today. So that gets their mind off their strange surroundings. Mm, smells so good. Guys, bird chop. Smells so good, look at it. And look at my mung bean sprouts, guys. Oh, so healthy. 
I love making bird breakfast, guys. See, I put masking tape sort of on all these top windows. Oh, this is a long walk <laughs> from my pantry all the way to the aviary. And guys, it is still raining. OMG, guys. Here we go. I got breakfast. It is a torrential downpour. Look, the birds are looking. They're like, do you have breakfast? I got food. All right, guys. So this one here is... Come on, I'll let it sit here. I'll make sure it's covered. And then... Yes. There you go. I think it's time we draw that retractable roof. Oh my gosh, guys, they are not interested in breakfast. I mean, I don't blame them. They're just, they're freaked out. But I find it interesting how, see, these two, they prefer to be in the rain. There's a shade where this bird is. These three birds prefer to be under the shades, but they're not interested in food right now. Maybe when it stops raining. This is definitely bird education for them. Oh, but guys, they look so good in there. Right? I knew those cages would fit in there perfectly. It's really wonderful. This cage, we could have moved to the right, but there's a hose right there, and I didn't want to block that. So it's just going to have to be there for now. And I think that's perfect, because I might want to put like a branch or like some kind of driftwood that comes up here somewhere. Oh my gulai, guys. RJ, it looks so good. <gasps> guys, do you see? Are we gonna unwrap the table today? Yay! Guys, we're unwrapping the table later. Can't wait for you guys to see it. And look, look at the whole look. We've unwrapped the plastic from the mirrors of the rotating panels. And, oh my gosh, oh, suddenly the mirror just made the place look so much bigger. Oh, and then we have the aviary with the bird. Guys, guys, it's happening. And I really love this dining table light fixture. Now, as you saw in yesterday's vlog, these two types of like lighting pieces actually are separate pieces. But Kathy C. King, our interior designer, and RJ kind of conceptualized this where well, we saw this online and we're like, we love it. So we definitely knew we wanted to incorporate it somewhere in the house. And Kathy also loved it. And I loved these shiny balls. <laughs> and so they came up with combining these two and it really looks like it's a set, even though it's not, see? I just noticed that this table is not directly under the light fixture. So I, they're gonna move it slightly this way. So it's perfectly centered. This table is so, it's beautiful, like we saw it in the store, a smaller version, and we asked if they could make a 14-seater. And they said, yeah. So this table can fit 14. So two here, two back there, and then five along here. Five as well here. We've ordered the chairs from abroad. I don't remember what country, but the chairs are coming as well. Yay, guys, look. I believe... The Conyers are eating, finally. The blue napes, however, are not. <laughs> They're still freaked out, I think. Feast, my dragons, feast. Yes, you're gonna need the energy to adapt, to adapt to the elements. So I'm probably gonna change the half roof. I say half roof because it's covering half the cage. I might use banana leaves. What do you guys think? Nice natural option, right? This female, young female, prefers to be <laughs> under the shade, but these two choose to actually be in the rain, strangely. But I mean, when I say in the rain, it's still not directly in the rain because I mean, there's a tree here and then there's the shelf that kind of covers. Do you like it? Feels pretty natural, right? Don't worry, you guys will get used to this, promise. So they're repairing the small uh, water feature. I've just put this here for now. But you know what? I'm actually liking it. With two. <laughs> I could put their food bowls here and the birds could feed here. Um, I actually do intend on eventually 
you know, on some days maybe not feeding them from their bowls, but actually having a bowl sit on top of their cage, um, or here, or on the floor, something like that. I'm not, I'm not sure, there's so many things we could do. I could even have like certain feeding stations way up there, keep the birds guessing. I'll, they also have some foraging toys, like that coconut, where I could put food into and then like hang them from places, right? So the birds are actually hunting for their food, which I probably might do, I'll see. There's lots of, like see all the rock cladding? I can maybe try to jam some seeds in there. I don't know, there's so much guys. Having a large decorated aviary like this is really good for enrichment. Guys, I actually like being in the aviary. It's kind of nice. I think it stopped raining now. Um, it's just drop, like droplets are falling from the foliage and that's it. But I like it in here. I really do need to get some kind of cool, comfortable seating. I'll just sit right here. This is where I would have my coffee. All right, so I moved the food bowl here to see if they would start to eat. I'm sure these birds are hungry. It's like an hour past the time that they usually get breakfast. And it looks like this one's checking it out. Yep, he's going. And then once he goes, the other two will go. Oh, no. Go ahead, don't be scared. He wants to fly there, but I think he's not confident because of the change in, in the room. Go ahead, you could climb there if you want. You could do that too. And Rojo is already playing, which is good. It means they're adapting well, very good. I'm watching this parrot drink from the bars. I'm guessing that this is a very natural behavior too. They'll probably eventually learn to drink water from like leaves after a rain shower. Yay guys, natural sunlight, finally. All right. This is the bird's first natural unfiltered sunlight. I mean, since they got here, um, cause apparently Sunlight coming through a window filters out a lot of the beneficial UV light that the birds need. So now they'll be able to get all the good, good sunlight here. Oh, isn't it nice? It must look so much better for your eyes too, birds. Because um, birds have certain receptors in their eyes that allow them to see a whole bunch of colors that we humans can't. So it must look really awesome for these birds being outside. Yes, sunlight, yes. Stream in, stream into the aviary, go. Do you like it here? Yeah? You like it here? <laughs> How about you, Scarlet? You like it here? This is, this here is um, Ruby. This is Scarlet. I think they're getting used to it already. Hmm? It's a pretty cool place. So I'm a Buhai squad. Just got back from the gym and even though the birds have shade, their food gets waterlogged, both of them. Look, see, all waterlogged. So I think I'm gonna have to start feeding them in other bowls. I think the bowls will have to go underneath, like on the floor perhaps, so that it doesn't get wet when it rains. I don't know what, I, I don't know guys. You poor birds, don't worry, it's afternoon now. You're gonna be getting your dry mix soon. In terms of water, it's okay that the water gets wet, obviously, they can drink that. Guys, now we're really MacGyvering it. <laughs> Look, pulled a whole banana leaf, broke it in half <laughs> from our yard, and I'm gonna use this, I think, to cover the cages. All right, birds, do not be alarmed. Just gonna remove the roof. These birds are totally freaked out. And I'm gonna use... <sighs> Banana leaves. Guys, they're uh, fixing the retractable roof. All right, um, just like that. Don't worry guys, no need to panic. It's just banana leaves. It's just a leaf. Look at them, they're so scared. I'm sorry, I know this is scary, but this is all part of your training. Ah, oh, that's better. See, it kind of drapes over the side like that. Now I can finally give you guys your dry mix. Oh good. That is much better. I don't think the food will get wet if it's like that. All right, time to do the same thing for this. Ugh. These birds are making the hungry sound. They are so hungry. Okay, for this I'm gonna probably drape it over like so. This is a huge stalk. I just need to drape it over that hole down there. Hi guys, just hang on. 
it's maybe upside down. Let's try that. Nope, that's not gonna work. I think I need to get another leaf. Whoa! Yes! Woo! It's so big! Oh my gosh, this one's big. Guys, this banana leaf had a huge spider. Hey! All right. I release thee into our aviary. Go, go, go. There it goes. It's now part of the aviary ecosystem. All right. I'm gonna drape this over here. See, the birds aren't like unfazed by this. Okay, Um. yeah, so I'm thinking I will be putting their seed mix here. So let's drape, but then these leaves won't be getting sunlight. Let's do that. There you go, money plant. Awesome. See, that should keep things dry, I think. And then this as like support to go up here. There we go. Oops. Sorry, Peruvian fern. There you go. Let's see if that will work. Uh, guys, I love this. I feel like I feel like I'm returning back to like nature. <laughs> This is like, this is like Boy Scout stuff. All right. But the birds are not impressed. They're way down here. Okay, I'm gonna serve your dry mix now. All right, guys. So I've wiped everything down. Wish me luck. Let's put the dry mix and let's hope it stays dry. Uh, there we go. Come on, birds. Yes, they're looking. You got seeds here. There you go. Now for the other birds. There's your food. You've been waiting for this. I know, look at them, they're excited. Here, get ready my dragons, wait. Here we go. Prepare to feast. Feast my dragons, feast. Feast on your dry mix, your healthy dry mix. Go and pellets. All right guys, finally. Yay. Success. Go ahead. Eat it, finally. And then once this one starts eating, the rest will follow. And it, the, one, the first one to eat is the shyest one. Awesome, yay, success. This is their first meal of the day. Here come the other two now, now that they know that. <laughs> now that they know this one's eating. Love it. Go ahead guys, feast, feast. I gave you guys extra because I know you didn't have breakfast. Awesome, this is awesome, awesome, awesome news. And guys, here comes the sunshine. Yes, I'm gonna ask the guys to remove the retractable roof so some natural sunlight can come in. Yay! Ah, oh, what a relief. Their first day in the aviary. And guys, there's the spider already building a web. Yay! Welcome, spider. Make sure to eat all mosquitoes, all right? Oh, oh my gosh, what a day. Ew, I have like, Banana tree gunk on me. <laughs> wow, what a day, Mabuhai squad. We moved the birds out. It looks like they are adapting to life there gradually. And so that really supports my decision to not release them today. I really want them to get comfortable in the cage um, and let that cage still be their safe haven so that when the day comes that I do release them in the aviary, um, they can you know, fly back to their cage when they need to feel safer, um, possibly when I feed them, you know, that kind of thing. I want them to just learn that their cages there in the aviary are their home base because my fear is if I were to release them like today, they'll just like go crazy and like get to places where we, can, we can't get to them. So yeah, oh my gosh, see what I mean? This is all trial and error, guys. We are winging it, <laughs> no pun intended. Oh guys, but 
It's been a super long vlog, seriously. So guys, thank you so much if you made it to the end. Honestly, it, this is just a crazy journey and it means so much to us that you guys are joining us watching these vlogs from wherever in the world you guys are. Be sure to hit that like button as it would really help us a lot. It lets YouTube know that our vlogs are worth sharing to new audiences and we see that you guys are doing that. Thank you very much. The vlogs are doing awesome, like in terms of viewership, the best they've ever done in the history of this channel. So thank you guys. And if you haven't yet, be sure to hit that subscribe button. Come join our Mabuhai squad. We will be your regular dose of positive vibes online. Yes. And stay tuned because the fun has just begun. I'll see you guys in the next vlog. Bye. Mm -hmm.